Hi, this is uh this is post editing jocks on my shitty laptop microphone. Um so for some reason the speed paint footage in this is incredibly choppy. It runs at like three frames a second. Uh, I think it was an issue with the recording, um, whenever I initially recorded it, so uh sorry that the speed paint footage isn't the best this time around. Hopefully that'll be resolved by the time I put my next video essay together. Alright. Thanks, enjoy the video. Heads up, this video contains massive spoilers for all of Big Top Burger Seasons 1 and 2. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Seriously, it'll take you like 30 minutes, 45 if you keep pausing between the episodes. It's a good time. So, I'm a writer. I have my own webcomic, Tip to Ferryman, check it out in the description below. And I love every second of making it. But there's something that's always driven me up the goddamn wall, and... It's writing exposition. It's hard to pull off. You need to explain unfamiliar concepts to your audience without having your characters just look in the camera and go, here's how this thing in our world works. In some ways, you have to do characterization that exact same way. I've definitely made my own flub ups here and there while doing this, but there is one cool little cartoon here on YouTube that I think I could take some notes from. Big Top Burger is an absurdist comedy by Ian Worthington, aka Worthy Kids. It's about three people running a clown-themed food truck while getting into wacky shenanigans with their boss Steve, who has something a little... off about him. It's also a masterclass in subtle characterization and something called naturalistic exposition. For the most part, it's a goofy show meant to make you laugh, but alongside that is the actual story. Oh yeah, baby, this thing's got lore. Steve is a clown from another planet, and in the story was world, uh, cl clowns are their own species. Don't worry about it. He's being hunted down by Chase Array, a zombie whose job is to round up paranormal creatures around the world and lock them up in this weird underworld thing. We don't really have a name for it yet, so I'm just gonna keep on calling it the underworld until further notice. Steve's just trying to run his burger truck, though. Let the man live. Come on, Chase Array. And to combat this, Chase Array makes a food truck of his own called Zomburger. There is a food truck expo and shenanigans ensue, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I want to talk about this show's writing and what we can learn from it as writers ourselves. I could talk about the great comedy for hours, and it definitely deserves that praise. The show is hilarious. But I'd like to talk about those two points I brought up a second ago. Characterization and exposition. I want to go over how Big Top Burger uses these so flawlessly, and hopefully along the way we can take a few notes for our own stories. Pencils ready, everyone. Big Top Burger has incredible character writing. Every character in the show stands out, and they all have little things baked into them that really make them pop, which is a great thing to have for your characters, giving them a few little things that make them differ from the rest. There are a few ways to achieve this, so let's go over some ways that Big Top Burger does this and take some notes. To start, there are two types of characterization, indirect and direct. Direct is when you outright tell your audience something about a character, as an example, if you have two characters talking about a third character, and one of them says, Oh, character C, they're super sweet. That tells your audience that the character is kind, or at the very least that character A perceives them that way. Now, you might be thinking, doesn't that break the show-don't-tell rule? Well, yes, but here's the thing. Sometimes outright telling your audience something is fine. I'd argue it's necessary at times if you want your dialogue to sound more natural. You do have to strike a balance here. Generally speaking, you can't do all telling or all showing, but I promise you're not breaking some sort of writing law if a character just outright says a thing. These rules are more like suggestions. Break them if it fits your story. Moving on. Direct characterization is pretty simple to do, so I think it'd be more interesting if we examined indirect characterization and how Big Top Burger handles it. Indirect characterization is when you have something implied about a character, be it through their mannerisms, their design, the way they speak, and so on. It's not outright said, but it can be very easily interpreted. Big Top Burger does indirect characterization fantastically, and in order to help us learn how to do it for ourselves, let's take a look at a few examples of this. If you're working with a visual medium, character design probably immediately comes to mind here. The two groups in Big Top Burger have themes to them, clowns and zombies, but working within these themes, Worthy Kids creates little variations that puts a little bit of the character's personalities into them. For simplicity's sake, let's just take a look at the clowns, or we'll be here all day. 
Zombrick or crew do have really cool designs, but I do think examining more simple designs and how they add their characterization can be a bit of an easier learning tool here. So let's begin. Penny's makeup is white and red. Her makeup patterns give her little circles on her cheeks. This evokes the imagery of rosy cheeks playing into her cheerful personality. She also has these little burger earrings, and given that she's the most enthusiastic out of the crew about this job, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. She's also the shortest of the group, and she's got a kind of round body and face. That is a great usage of shape language. You can always break these rules, of course, but generally, round shapes are used to convey friendliness in a character's design. Tim's the straight man of the group. He's not immune to getting into shenanigans, but he's usually the first one to point out when something seems weird. His makeup is purple with little marks above the eyes. This might be me stretching, but it kind of reminds me of raised eyebrows. Like, you know, he's skeptical about the things around him or something. He's wearing a little chef's cap, which makes him look a little taller than the rest of the group. It also kind of gives the impression that, below Steve, he's usually the guy in charge. Also, the glasses are a quick shorthand for, this is your smart character. Then there's Billy. She's a bit gothy and... I don't know if detached is the right word? Aloof? Something like that. She doesn't have any unfriendly traits that those words might imply, but she is the kind of person to watch something explode and go, Whoa. Anyway. And it's great. Billy has black, spiky hair with little gray streaks in there. Her makeup is blue and the patterns go underneath her eyes, making it look like really heavy eyeshadow or eye bags. All of these little bits of her design really show off her style, and through that we can learn about her personality. And finally, there's the big man himself. Steve. Steve's silhouette is very different from the rest of the Big Top crew. He's got this big triangular head and a stocky body. Generally, all the Big Top guys look pretty human, but Steve's proportions give off the vibe of him being something otherworldly in some way. His hair is a bit messy, and he wears baggy clothing and a beanie, plus a little burger t-shirt. So he stands out from the rest of the crew that are in full uniform. This both adds to the idea that there's something different about Steve, while also showing his more... We'll call it laid back and pretty chaotic way of doing business. Or, well, of doing anything, really. All of these character designs tell us something about the characters while also cohering with a set theme. You too can achieve this by tweaking little things about your designs. Make them all stand out. Change a character's body type, their facial features, their skin tones, their hairstyle. Add personal details that reflect their backstory or personality into their outfits. All those little things will add up into an excellently designed character that sticks out from the rest of your cast. Now, let's move on to something called character voice. This is my character voice, and this is my normal voice. Another great way to do characterization is through character voice. Character voice is the unique way your character speaks. This could be an accent they have, the slang they use, how fast they speak, just verbal patterns that help them stick out. Big Top Burger does this in a lot of ways. Steve will often switch back and forth between a posh manner of speech and a more quiet, gravelly voice, something that highlights his strange mannerisms. He also has a habit of getting people's names wrong. Peggy, Tom, Toby, you get the gist. Billy speaks very slowly, even in moments of high energy she sounds utterly exhausted. Doctor has a very dramatic vocabulary and an equally dramatic voice. He sounds like a villain ripped straight out of a Saturday morning cartoon. And then there's... We can't do this bit without talking about Chase Array. Chase Array is absurd. I genuinely don't know how else to describe the guy. He's just very hammy. Almost every line of dialogue Chase Array has echoes, which could be because Chris Fleming just really likes shouting their lines as loud as heavenly possible, but it does also immediately tell us that the guy is something otherworldly. He also has this habit of using really strange similes and metaphors or whatever. Here's just a few of my favorite examples. Oh, you want to take some sucker shots at my banana cage? You want to take some sucker shots at my banana cage, Bilbo? No shit besides puppets and viewpointing. I swear to God, if I can't get good parking, I will crash this butch mechanism into an embankment wall. Guys, don't look as weird as me. Then I am going to stick out like a horseshoe crab in a freshwater environment. This is what it's like down here, Steve. It's all townhouses. It's, it's, just, it's like Phoenix, Steve. Just imagine that. All right, I need to stop myself before this entire video is just a Chase Array compilation. I, I'm obsessed with this dude. 
There's a few other things, too. He swears the most out of the whole cast. He emphasizes words like backpack in a weird way. He'll restart his sentences and interrupt himself a lot, and he tends to go on these really long tangents. Do need a backpack. Yeah, of course you do. Of course you do, baby. I've decided to make peace with you, Stephen. I've grown old and infirmed. I... I'm... ancient now. I'm different. I'm older. I'm peaceful. I'm... I'm an old hag, Steve. I just give up. I'm an old backpack vendor. I give gifts. No, I said this wouldn't be a Chase Array compilation, but, but li listen, there there is so much happening in this scene. I, I can't... I can't not acknowledge it, man. Point is, all of these little things add up to tell us a few things about Chase Array. He is an extremely hammy villain who revels in that fact. He's a little all over the place. He has a short temper. I could go on. Character voice is a simple but effective way to help your characters stand out from each other, while adding a little more strength to their personalities. Think about what they're like, where they're from, their temperament, how would they respond to certain bits of info, and how would that response differ from the other characters. Like, if a truck exploded in front of them, would they react with loud shock? A quiet, oh wow. Would they go, oh that's so cool? That sort of thing. There's also a third thing I want to discuss before we're finished with characterization, but I don't really know how to categorize it, so we're just going to call this part the little things. Subtleties in dialogue or whatever else that just add an extra pinch of spice to how Big Top Burger writes its characters. So let's go through a quick bullet list. Billy is unfamiliar with Zomburger, Big Top Burger's long-standing rival. This tells us that she's probably the newest out of the three employees. Steve is extremely nervous at the food truck expo. He's unable to answer questions from the mascot and generally seems anxious talking to people there. Given this is technically a performance, what with him showing off his business for a whole expo to see? His stage fright is something that ultimately got him banished from his home planet, as we learn later. In addition to this, that little back on Broadway yet again bit comes up in season 1, telling us Steve was a performer at some point. This also comes up again later when his backstory is revealed in Up. Doctor, who I'm just gonna call Doc, insists their workplace rivalry is all just for fun. Later, when Chase Array traps Steve, Doc reacts with a shocked boss, which tells us that it wasn't just talk. Doc and his friends were genuinely just having a bit of fun with workplace rivalry. Granted, extremely dramatic, dangerous, and meteor majory fun, but still. Chase Array does this little uncomfortable shuffle whenever he realizes Steve doesn't know he'd been under the ground for millions of years. Season 3 hasn't started yet, so I can't speak to exactly what this says about Chase Array, but it makes me think that there might be a softer side to the guy. Given some lyrics in Season 2's theme song, Friends in Low Places, it makes me think it's probably about Chase Array. Penny has a daughter, but before we even learn that, she tells Billy that she's great with kids and generally has a bit of the those crazy kids attitude towards Steve's antics. And I have to stop myself there or we'll be here all day. Small details like this tell the audience information about your characters without them even realizing that they're learning anything. If you want to achieve something like this in your own writing, really focus on your character's role in the scene and what information you're meant to be learning in that scene. Is one of your characters unfamiliar with the subject at hand because they're new or inexperienced? Have them be the one to question it. Is your character opposed to the situation at hand? Ask yourself how they'd react to feeling that opposition. Would they question the authority, feel discomfort, but ultimately walk away? Something else entirely. Figure it out. Writing characters is all about asking questions and giving answers. You can answer these questions through a myriad of ways. Character design, character voice, and just little details you hide in plain sight. There are definitely more ways to do this, but I think these are Big Top Burger's biggest strengths in characterization. So hopefully we've come out on the other side of this, having learned a little bit more about characterization thanks to the Big Top crew. Characterization isn't the only thing we can learn from Big Top's writing, though. Exposition. We all need it, we all hate writing it. Earlier, I said you need to strike a balance with showing and telling. When it comes to writing characters, that is a bit easier to do, but writing exposition is an entirely different beast. Even in slice-of-life stories that are grounded in reality, you need to effectively communicate to your audience the rules of the world or society that your work takes place in without having a guy just look into the camera and go, this is how our magic system works. The reason for this is because doing so brings your story's pacing to a halt. 
Stopping all the interesting stuff to sit your audience down and give them a lecture is a quick way to kill interest. Some really good advice I got a while back is entertain while you explain. Something I heard from this here video by We Are Not Alive. Side note, if you want some quick and easy writing tips, check this video out. It's incredibly helpful. Anyway, what this means is that you need to find a way to make your exposition fun. You've got to make it feel natural while keeping your audience engaged with what's going on in the scene. There's one tool you can use to do this, and it's one Big Top Burger uses very frequently. Naturalistic exposition. It's this little writing tool that you can use where you convey information to the audience by just naturally placing the explanation into the story. This can be through dialogue, descriptions of a set piece with some odd details, assuming you're using prose as your medium. If you're doing visual, it can be in character design or environment design details as well. Big Top Burger has a lot of really good examples of this. One of my favorite examples is from the season 1 finale, Grease Paint. This, in general, is a great episode. It shows the Big Top crew washing off their makeup and getting ready to head home for the day. There's no antics, no wacky shenanigans, just some friends closing up for the night and heading home. It's a really peaceful episode and helps you connect with these characters in a subtle way. I like it a lot. But in terms of exposition, there's a brief exchange at the end of the episode that reveals something huge. Well, this can't be right. Were you folks all clowns this morning? Yeah, uh, it's just makeup. Like grease paint? What did you think it was? Well, I thought you were all real, genuine clowns. Very disappointing. Dude, clowns aren't real. That's wild. Yeah, that'd be insane. Hey, Steve, you coming? gonna wear that all night huh <laughs> weird vibes on this guy i'm telling you in just a few seconds we learned three things about this world one clowns are an actual species they're not just people in costumes two they're kind of akin to legendary monsters like cryptids or aliens some people believe they're real others don't three steve is likely an actual clown which is a hilarious sentence i love having to say in a completely serious tone and so his appearance isn't just makeup. It's such a small thing, but that brief dialogue exchange is a great example of natural exposition. It gets added to with other bits of dialogue in Season 2, where Tim again mentions that he's never seen Steve without his makeup on. There are a few other great examples of this, particularly revolving around Chase Array. Zomburger being put in opposition to Big Top Burger makes us question what exactly Chase Array is. By the end of season one, we basically know that Steve isn't human, what with his weird powers and that aforementioned exchange at the end of the season. Because Chase Ray is... a pretty strange dude himself, to put it nicely, we're already predispositioned to question if he's human too. Playing with your audience expectations like this is a simple way to do some subtle exposition. If there's one secret group of non-humans in your world, could there be another? There's some other small things that add to this. Let's go through a quick bullet list of these things. In Season 2's intro, we see Chase Array walking around in some strange-looking cavern while everyone else is at home. This gives him a kind of mysterious air and makes us wonder exactly what he's up to. When Francis offers Chase Array a very bad falafel, Chase Array's response is to say, Cool, I don't eat food. Chase Array chastises his employees for wanting to remove their costumes because it'll blow his cover. When Chase Ray finally captures Steve using magic kettlebells, he calls it a gift from upper management while pointing down at the ground. He also says, I don't usually need help catching you freakazoids, but you're one tricky bitch, Steve. Side note, the yeah, that's the point scene is like genuinely one of the coolest animated bits I've ever seen in a web series. I I've rewatched down like a thousand fucking times just for this bit. Let's stop here for a second. And up, Chase Ray does explain a few things but that's more a confirmation of what the previous points implied to us. Let's go over what we learned from each of these points. Chase Array resides in some sort of underworld-like place. Perhaps this is where his friends in low places come in. Chase Array doesn't have human needs. He doesn't eat food because he doesn't have to. Ergo, Chase Array is not human. Chase Array can't be seen as an odd one out around humans, as it will give away that he himself isn't human. Chase Array works for some sort of organization that captures other paranormal creatures like clowns, and that organization resides underground, calling back to the cavern in the intro. This is an interesting combination of foreshadowing and exposition. There are bits of your world that you might not want to make immediately obvious. They could be a part of a huge plot twist or something like that. What Big Top Burger does here, hinting at bits of the world without directly confirming anything until the twist itself, is a great way to write this without sounding unnatural. 
Big Top's world building is pretty simple, so I can't give much advice if you're planning on doing some sort of mega expansive high fantasy story, but you can still use this advice here for that kind of story. Remember, entertain while you explain. And hopefully, using the examples Big Top Burger has provided us, we've all learned how to do just that. Pencils down, everyone. Or, well, keep them up, I guess. We're all writers here, after all. Big Top Burger is a hilarious show with absolutely amazing writing. It's a great example on how to write subtle characterization and exposition. And hopefully, through this little analysis, we've all come out with a few more tools in our writer's kits. If you haven't yet, go check out the show. It's right here on YouTube, and you can finish it in less than an hour. Show every kids and the rest of the Big Top gang a little bit of love. They burned it. Thank you for tuning in. This is my second video essay. Hopefully my mic quality is a bit better from last time. I, I finally found my pop filter, thank god. If you got anything writing-wise from Big Top Burger you think I missed here, feel free to drop it down in the comments below. I love just, like, overanalyzing this show. It's genuinely fantastic, so I'll take any excuse to talk about it. If you like what I do here, like, comment, and subscribe. If you like funky mystery stories about paranormal creatures, why not check out my webcomic, Tip the Ferryman? It's about ghost hunters, identity crises, and cool powers you get from being yourself. Links to that and all my social media pages are in the description below. A uh, link to where you can watch Big Top Burger is also below. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.